What's up gamers? It's Andrew King and Gabrielle Castagna here at PAX East 2024. It's the last day of the show. We just got done with our last appointment. <laughs> We're tired. Super tired. We're exhausted, <laughs> but we wanted to talk about the best games that we saw at the show, and best is obviously subjective. Yeah. I know for one, the that, like one of the things I saw, I told Gabrielle was one of my favorites, and she was like, "Oh, that was very favorite." <laughs> so uh, you know, it'll it'll vary. So why don't we start with your third favorite game of the show? I think I would give the honor to the sequel to Chicken Police. I have heard so much about this game, both at work and from my friends outside of work, and just everybody has told me it would be directly up my alley. I absolutely loved what I saw. It was like a 60, 50s, 60s noir detective, but everybody is animals. And I know there's the first Chicken Police. Uh, I am immediately gonna go home and play that so I can be ready for when the sequel comes out. They don't have a firm date, but they are aiming for the end of this year. Uh, Alright, what is my third favorite game that I played? Um, I don't know if this is third, could be second, but I played uh, Street Dog BMX, mm. is what it was called, which was a sort of Tony Hawk, Dave Mira inspired um, BMX riding game. Super colorful art style. Um, the developer mentioned like Valorant as sort of like an inspiration for the aesthetic because it's like clean but colorful so that makes it really easy to read. You know, you know what you're doing. You can tell what you're doing even when you're like going super fast. And once I hit <laughs> him, the controller, he was going super fast <laughs> through it. He showed us some really cool tricks. It was nice. Yeah, it was fun. All right, so what was your second favorite thing? Yeah. I'm gonna give my second to Slime Heroes. I absolutely love a good little hack and slash game. You play it as a little slime that you get to customize. I did mine evil with fangs, and he always looked very sassy when, because the end when you die, which happens often, you get your stuff back, which is great. Uh, but you die fairly often, and all of the uh, game over screens when it puts you back to the beginning of the level are so sassy. Uh, I was splatted on the ground several times. Uh, it was like, you're gonna feel that in the morning. Just all sorts of like cheesy flavor text, which yeah. I thought added a lot. Um, there are 18 power-ups in the game right now. They might add more before the final build. I played an alpha build with pre-alpha. Um, very, very early on, but there are, you can make Four combinations you can do, you can double up on them. For instance, I had the projectile and the tornado. So if I had two tornadoes, I made a really, really strong tornado. Um, the projectile and the tornado in that order made a protection around me, like a protective barrier, but swapping the order to like the exact opposite way around made me a gun that I could just shoot tornadoes out of. So not only are there those different combinations, but depending on the way you flip them, they're totally different. So there's gonna be a ton of different combinations to check out. Second favorite that I played is probably Memories Reach, mm. which you were there when I played I was. that. <laughs> yeah, that's like a- It's colorful, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's like a first person Metroidvania, no combat. So mm. sort of in the vein of like, Mist or The Witness, um, or Metroid Prime, but with no, you know, guns, obviously. Mm. Um, and so that was in this like big area, it was like a circular area with multiple levels, and you were trying to manipulate <laughs> these lasers so that they activated this like central area, and then mm -hmm. you could get an item that you needed from in there. Um, and so it had this really cool big overarching puzzle that you were solving, but then you were also doing these like little brain manipulation puzzles within it. You know, that game was a lot of fun. I loved that kind of game. I wrote in my, you know, preview of it about how I think of games like that as sort of dad games because that was what my dad was into like when I was growing up. So now we're down to it. What was your number one favorite thing that you saw here? I, it is such a toss up, uh, but my number one favorite thing that I saw was Wither Bloom. Uh, it is such an adventure game. It starts off, you hear about how it was this realm that was protected by the gods. It was vibrant, it was beautiful, uh, but the gods just kind of left one day and they didn't explain why. You will find out, uh, you will explore why, um, but without the power, the world just kind of decayed entirely and there's blight that just sucks out your life mm. and there are all sorts of like skeletal monsters. Yeah. That you, like there is such a detailed like, 
combination system with the crafting and meals and different weapons. You use your weapons to make tools and your tools to make weapons. Mm. And you have to like, I had to purify the water before yeah. I could use it. Uh, and I collected mushrooms. I made myself a little tea. Uh, there is a, a, you have to keep in track of your like energy and your hydration. And they gradually decay throughout the game okay. instead of just like, oh, hey, by the way, you're dehydrated. Yeah. It, like, there are different scales. It's like, you're a little thirsty, you're parched, you're dehydrated. Mm. And, like, the worse off you get, obviously, like, the less well you fare in this just barren, wild world. And, like, yeah. it, the colors are so vibrant, and it's just... I only played one level. I got. I had to go up into the sky area. Mm. Combat got so much harder up there. I definitely died, mm. um, but I was warned that I would. My number one favorite was one that I saw pretty early into the show. I think it might have been one of the first things I like the first day that we were here. That was called Altered Alma, mm. and that was like a cyberpunk Metroidvania where you're in a spaceport and you're trying to get a spaceship so you can escape from. Mm. It's set in Neo Barcelona. Interesting. Yeah, so they say that it'll like be recognizable if you've been to Barcelona. It'll be like familiar with landmarks, but it also will have changed. Cool. It really like accelerated like the Metroidvania arc. Mm. Like I think sometimes it can be worthwhile for like games to sort of parcel out tools until so you're getting like something like a double jump like 10 hours in right but this Keep didn't do that right this like had it all this like in the half hour of it that i played had like like three or four abilities that mm. i got um and so even in that space it went from like the stiff like way that metroidvanias feel a lot of the time at the early game where you like don't have much that you can do you can just run a jump basically to like having a ton of different stuff so altered alma number one for me i think awesome yeah i will review your honorable mentions well i saw a game called lucid yesterday which was also a metroidvania mm. the developer eric i'm blanking on his last name um calls it a celestroidvania i like that yes and so it has like in celeste you have like you know you'll boost through the like certain areas and then like gain speed like that you can do that in this where you can like boost and like break through a wall and stuff like that i actually did not pay as close attention as i wanted to this demo because i was having a very <laughs> engaging conversation with eric the developer who was a very um fun guy to talk to <laughs> so yeah that was a cool one and uh fratless was a game i played yesterday which is like sort of a uh, like a music rpg basically mm -hmm. and um you are a guy with a guitar and it's sort of like a deck builder and you're like getting new cards the change that you can do and you can they're called riffs you like put together to form riffs i yes <laughs> yeah it's pretty fun and so like the order that you play cards and like i had one card that said you deal damage equal to whatever your shields are and mm -hmm. so if i played cards that built up my shield in the same riff as that but earlier then it would build up and i'd have like oh, cool. 20 and then i could deal way more damage if i put it at the end than if i put it at the beginning <laughs> interesting I yeah like so that was cool and then there was like straight up like rhythm section like there was a boss fight where like when i was attacking i had to like nail a you know rhythm entry and then when the boss was attacking me, I could prevent him from doing damage by nailing the rhythm when he was doing it. So Was it like seamlessly integrated or was yeah. it like, hey, you're going to do this now? No, it just sort of started up. Like, <laughs> yeah, like, like in the same way like a battle animation would, it like the screen cleared and then it was like, okay, it's this thing. And then it went back to the Interesting. battle. So, I like that. Yeah, that was a cool game. Hell yeah. All right, what were your honorable mentions? I really loved Snacko. It is a very cute little farming sim. You go out on a boat adventure. You're look, your cats, your your cats. That's half of why I loved it. Uh, your two cats. It's your cat that you customize, and your friend Momo. You are tired of your nine to five jobs, so you try to find the paradise island of Snacko, and your boat gets destroyed. You wash up there, and you find that it's totally ruined, and there's very few animals left there. Uh, you're kind of taken in on the lay of the land, and over time you'll get to invite up to, I believe they said 30 residents of different animal species and everything. Uh, there are 12 different romance options. Uh, I was shown a very sassy wolf who, after I spoke to him like three times, told me to leave his house. So that was fun. Um, the other thing that I really, really loved 
was the Pokemon Battle Lab and the Pokemon Play Lab. Uh, I am a massive Pokemon fan. I have been since the 90s, original. I can still sing you the Boku rap. Mm -hmm. um, so it was really cool to go in and see that Pokemon has this space now at events where they have people showing you how to play the trading card game, which I really wish I had time to go back and do because I collected cards when I was a kid, but as a kid, you don't know the value when I gave them away, kind of have some regrets about that. Mm -hmm. But yes, that has been our weekend at Paxi's. We saw a lot of games. We came, we saw, we conquered. <laughs> Lots of stuff we didn't mention that we're really looking forward to. Everybody was really nice yeah. that I talked to. So yeah. I thank you everyone here and thank you Boston for Paxi's. Of course. All right. <laughs> Peace gamer. Bye. Bye. <laughs>